Hi folks, so if you saw my previous video, we took a look at the effects that a minimum mass brown dwarf would currently be having on the positions of the planets if it were rapidly approaching us from beneath the ecliptic, perpendicular to the ecliptic, at near escape velocity, giving us the least amount of warning. Would we see effects on Saturn and its position currently if it were only a matter of weeks or months away? And indeed, we would see drastic effects which simply aren't there. But I wanted to answer a more general question, which is whether or not a brown dwarf in a 3,600 year orbit, as commonly claimed, would result in a stable solar system if its orbit took it into the inner solar system on that time period. So we want to take a look at a control situation first and see what the solar system looks like normally over, say, a hundred such orbits, 360,000 years of time. So you could see all the planets here out to Saturn. And I'll fast forward through that time, and you can see what happens to the orbits over that period of time. They do this sort of hula hoop motion, and that's normal. Uh, this is apsidal precession, which is precession of the aphelion point of each orbit that gets torqued around uh, throughout the orbit um, over this kind of period of time, and that's caused by the gravity of the planets on each other. It creates this sort of dancing motion of the solar system. But the eccentricities themselves remain relatively fixed, the inclinations remain relatively stable, so the planets are all still orbiting in about the same plane on the ecliptic. And this is just how the solar system normally moves. So that's the normal situation. I'll back up here, zoom out so you can see even Pluto, and we'll just play it again one more time. So that's the uh, normal situation. Now if we add in a minimum mass brown dwarf, that comes in as far as the asteroid belt and passes back out every 3600 years, what happens? Well, we can take a look and see. So this is an identical simulation, only this time we have a minimum mass brown dwarf passing through. So I'll get the settings right here, zoom out a little bit, and then we'll take a look again. So this time, the orbits are getting torqued around even more and very quickly become chaotic. almost random. And at this point, the inclinations are all very different from each other. You know, it kind of reminds me of that uh, diagram in uh, Admiral Tarkin's screen in the uh, Death Star in Star Wars just before he destroys Alderaan. Kind of looks a bit like that. And this is because we now have a minimum mass brown dwarf passing through the solar system every 3600 years, and that just messes everything up. Uh, this system is not at all stable. In fact, at one point, Saturn almost got thrown out of the solar system, and if you notice now, the orbits of, or the uh, order of the planets, in order from the Sun, is now disrupted. You have Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Saturn, then Jupiter. That's backwards. Saturn's supposed to be orbiting the Sun farther than Jupiter, which is how it started out. So what happened? Well, Saturn's orbit, along with the orbits of the other planets, was badly perturbed over time by this uh, brown dwarf. And at some point, it actually nearly gets ejected from the solar system. So here you can see its orbit is, Saturn's orbit is starting to grow. And depending on how it intersects Jupiter's orbit, or passes close to Jupiter's orbit, uh, it's either pushed further out into the solar system or pulled back in. If Saturn passes ahead of Jupiter, uh, at the point where they're close together, Jupiter will tug it back down essentially and reduce its aphelion point and pull it closer into the solar system. If it follows behind Jupiter in its orbit when it passes close to Jupiter, it will actually get thrown deeper into the solar system. But over time its orbit shrinks because of Jupiter's effects, which are exaggerated now because this minimum mass brown dwarf has put these orbits close together and ultimately Saturn gets pulled into the inner solar system, mostly by Jupiter, some of it's uh, being caused by uh, the brown dwarf as well. But in general the solar system is now destabilized, these planets are tugging on each other in ridiculous ways that doesn't actually happen in our solar system, uh, and the inclinations are completely out of alignment. Uh, the planets no longer orbit on a single plane, they all orbit on multiple planes, and by the end of it I mean, it's just ridiculous. There's no one plane of the solar system. If you take Earth as the uh, standard ecliptic, 
as the line on which everything orbits and you try to project it all out, it's all over the place. So if such an object were in our solar system, we'd know about it because we wouldn't have a very stable solar system. It would look completely chaotic. And we wouldn't have a very stable climate either because at this point, Earth's eccentricity or how, uh, how much of an ellipse Earth's orbit forms as opposed to a circle is now exaggerated and it's increasing over time too. We can chart that out, we can plot that on a chart and see how it looks over time. And when it comes up here, I'll show you. Unfortunately, it's taking a while because it is a lot of data. So if we set the body to Earth, we take a look at eccentricity. You can see eccentricity here in the normal situation starts out below 0.05. It's very low. And over time, it starts oscillating up and up and up. And by this point, towards the end of the simulation, it's above 0.3. Yeah, we're around 0.332. That's a lot of eccentricity. So normally our seasons are dictated purely by our axial tilt, our 23 and a half degree axial tilt. So depending on whether the sun is tilted towards or away from a hemisphere, will determine whether that hemisphere is experiencing summer or winter. And that's because our eccentricity is normally quite low as it starts out here. Uh, so how far we are from the sun doesn't have much of an effect on our climate. In this situation, it would. Uh, the climates would be, or the, the climate itself would be greatly disturbed by this. So it's questionable whether we as a civilization would even be able to thrive and survive, whether a civilization could even crop up on such a wild sort of planet. Um, certainly, with all the asteroids disrupted, we'd be expecting uh, more frequent major impacts uh, that would uh, certainly make life troublesome for humans here on the planet. Uh, in general, the solar system just would not resemble uh, what it currently looks like. Uh, I'll show you again uh, the point at which Saturn was nearly ejected from the solar system. It really could have gone either way. It's almost a coin flip depending on just how the initial conditions play out when that uh, brown dwarf comes through. So if we look at Saturn's eccentricity, it goes through a very chaotic period and at its greatest it's above 0.8. If it goes above 1, that's basically being ejected from the solar system and kiss Saturn goodbye. It almost happens, but instead it gets pulled back into the inner solar system deeper than Jupiter. Uh, and once again, uh, the final result is just a very jumbled solar system that doesn't resemble us at all. So, in short, the answer is no. If there were such an object orbiting on a 3600 year orbit, we'd know about it because the solar system would be a mess. So you can uh, rest assured that that's not the case, and uh, have a nice day.